Madison is the most popular girl at St. Mary's boarding school. When dorky, eccentric Irene transfers in, she is quickly singled out by Madison's cruel girls group. During Irene's science project on physic abilities, she discovers Madison has supernatural powers. While the other girls still treat Irene as an outcast, Madison befriends her in hopes that Irene's expertise with the paranormal will guide her newfound abilities. Rather than use her powers for good, Madison gets even more nasty and uses them to hurt others. Hogwarts this is not, for the wrathful cruelty of a teenage girl knows no limits. But there are more surprises lurking around the corners of St. Mary's School that will slowly unravel in this rite of passage tale. So make sure your homework is done as we learn more about this story. Welcome to St. Mary's All-Girls School. Madison is pimping herself to look perfect as usual. A new girl has just arrived. Irene is awkward, strange, and a bit disheveled. Because she was transferred in mid-semester, she has no friends and must catch up. Mrs. Watson asks her to introduce herself, and she fumbles with her words. She tells the class her science project will be about physic abilities. As she goes to sit, Madison and the other mean girls make fun of her and send her a nasty note. Madison asks her if she needs a pencil, then searches her desk and book looking for one as the pencil appears. She throws it at Irene, and then the pencil dematerializes on the floor. High school is a period that feels like a walking nightmare, one in which we're lost in a maze, searching for ourselves. But what if, during this precarious phase of development, you are introduced to a set of extraordinary powers? That's all it would take to send these students here on a harrowing field trip to the Twilight Zone. Irene is in her room reading books on the occult, her favorite subject. Out the window, she hears Madison with the popular girls making fun of her project. She asks Mrs. Watson if she can change it, but it's too late. The next day, Irene runs the test using Zener cards for the class, and the students try to read her mind and circle the symbol she is holding. Normal probability would have five or six correct by random guessing. When Irene grades Madison's paper, every answer is incorrect. This could only have happened if Madison purposely guessed wrong to conceal that she knew which symbol was on every card. Irene calls upon Madison and tells her she knows she purposely threw the project because it is not possible to get all the cards wrong. Madison is very mean and sarcastic to her. Irene tells Madison she might be suppressing yet-to-be-discovered superpowers. Irene goes on to say if Madison can develop her psychic abilities, she could do so many cool things with them. Madison's friends are teasing and telling her to send Irene away, so with the peer pressure, she shuts the door. Irene leaves her Zener cards by the door so Madison can test herself. Madison practices and guesses every card. This intrigues and frightens her, so she leaves a note for Irene asking her to meet her at her secret place. They arrive in an old basement bathroom, but Madison acts aggressively towards Irene, thinking she is being pranked. Madison wants to know how she can guess every card correctly, and Irene blurts out, it's because she's special. Since Irene knows a lot about physics stuff, Madison asks her to help her learn of her abilities. Irene gathers all her occult materials, candles, books, and props, and brings them to the basement. She sets up altars and writes all the ways physic powers can manifest themselves on a mirror. She plans to test Madison for them one by one. As Irene is describing the different types, Madison is still resistant, believing the ritual room Irene set up is just her playing a weird game. Madison asks why she cares about all this eerie stuff and why she just doesn't want to be normal. Come on, sometimes mystical stuff can be cool. So the tests begin. Madison kind of assumed everyone just knows things the way she does. Next, Irene burns a card but holds the image in her mind and Madison learns she has telepathy too. Later that day, Madison begins to use her powers in nefarious ways. She gets a girl to move from her seat by correctly identifying what's hidden in her bag. 
but then reading her mind discloses a traumatic experience the girl recently had, making her so upset, and she collapses. Oh, this Madison is sadistic. She and Irene are starting to become friends. In between practicing psychic skills, Madison gives her tips on makeup and how to be popular. They test Madison's skills, but she can only conjure things, read minds, and put thoughts into people's heads. That's a uh, pretty impressive bag of tricks, wouldn't you say? As the two are walking back to their rooms, a teacher stops them to ask why they are out and about at 1 a.m. She accuses them of lying and says they will receive a serious demerit. Madison threatens her that she will tell the dean about stealing money to cover the teacher's gambling problem. Irene chimes in asking for the key to the balcony, a place the girls like to hang out, drink, and smoke. The astonished teacher replies she doesn't have the key and sends the girls away. The two think it's awesome that they blackmailed the teacher to get out of trouble. But they really wanted the key, and just then, it appears on the ground. Madison conjured it. Madison grabs the key and goes to awaken her friends, Gwen and Lisa, to go party on the balcony with Irene. After opening the balcony door, the key disintegrates in Madison's hand. Hmm, things she conjures only exist until they've served their purpose. The four girls are sitting on the ledge playing Never Have I Ever, but Gwen and Lisa continue to treat Irene badly. This doesn't sit well with Madison, who has grown quite fond of the new girl. All of them are getting intoxicated and using poor judgment. Gwen tells Irene to take her shirt off, and she almost does, thinking it makes her cool. The girls are really mean, and Madison tells them to stop. She then starts arguing with them and using her ESP to tell them embarrassing things they have done. As they fight, Irene goes to climb over the rail, but it breaks and she plummets to the cement three stories down. Madison goes down, expecting her to be dead, but instead she wakes up as though nothing happened. Irene claims that Madison must have done something unconscious to keep her safe. The next day at the cafeteria, Gwen and Lisa allow Irene to eat with them, but Madison is now out of the popular girl's loop. While Madison sits alone in the basement waiting for Irene, Irene ends up getting inebriated with the girls and doing all kinds of stupid things. The girls are taking video and pictures of her until Irene passes out. Madison enters the room and saves Irene by removing her from the situation and carrying her to bed. Madison tells her to stop socializing with them. They are bad people. But Irene tells her she is just jealous. Madison gets angry and says she is done hanging out with Irene and the other girls. Irene continues to enjoy her acceptance with the popular girls, and they tell her to make sure to visit their booth during the science fair the next day. During the exhibition, the teacher is grading each group project. Irene's physics research fails because she spent most of her time helping Madison. As Irene roams the room, observing other student displays, she looks upon the one her friends made. And it's all about Irene babbling in her drunken haze. It is cruel and humiliating, with Gwen and Lisa asking her embarrassing questions and her giving laughable answers. The girls are hilariously giggling with her as the butt of their joke. It is titled, Anatomy of a Loser. They only pretended to accept her into their clique to use her for their prank. Irene is crying and then gets enraged and starts screaming. As Irene is shrieking, the monitors crack and all three girls fall to the floor, brain dead. Stunned, Madison just stares as the incident occurs. Madison and the other students sadly watch as the ambulance takes away the catatonic girls. Irene is hiding in the basement as Madison rushes in demanding to know what she did to those girls. She accuses Irene of being the one with all the psychic powers and using them to control her all along. She goes on to say that Irene has just been manipulating her so she could become popular and even putting thoughts in her head. Since Irene had been there each time a psychic event took place, Irene must be the one with the powers. Madison starts to cry, saying that Irene made her think she was special, then asks if she killed her other friends. Irene vehemently denies having any powers and explains that Madison struck down the mean girls to defend her and get revenge for them hurting her friend. 
Madison doesn't want to hear it and tells Irene that on the day Irene arrived at school, she was hoping to meet a nice, normal girl. Someone who would be her friend, but instead, it's been a nightmare. Irene asks Madison why it's so hard for her to admit the two shared a friendship. Irene claims Madison's pain comes from her fear of getting close to people. Irene wants her to admit that she used her powers to save her, both from the roof and from the mean girls. Irene takes Madison in her arms and tells her, we are friends, and to accept it. Madison says when she cares for people, they wind up hurting her, betraying her, or going away. Irene assures her she would never do that. The two embrace, and Madison admits that she considers Irene her one true friend. As the two are hugging, Irene starts to crackle. She asks Madison what's happening, then slowly turns into a statue and crumbles to the ground. Madison screams, realizing Irene was just her conjuring. She can manifest whatever is needed at the moment, but it only exists until it served its purpose, then disintegrates into oblivion. She needed a friend, and now that Irene served her purpose, she is gone. As she cries alone in the basement, she recalls how it was her who cracked the screens and destroyed the girls at the science fair. As the episode ends, Madison is seated alone in the classroom as a new, seemingly nice and normal student appears. She hopes the two can become friends. On the surface, Madison appeared to have it all, but inside, she was lost and alone. So she created Irene, a projection in every sense. One part wish fulfillment, another part confession. An unconscious cry for help from within her psychic prison in the Twilight Zone. So, how much of Madison's world has she conjured? How will she ever know for sure if the people in her reality are real or just her conjuring? How far can her powers go and how well is she able to control them? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Unless this is your conjuring and this video disappears into oblivion. Once again, thanks for listening. And if you'd like to see more on movie shortens, click on our next videos or playlist on the screen. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.